My name is Henry Lee from BlueHeronArts.com. Today, we are going to introduce you some basic uh, strokes and uh, method of painting roses. Um, I'm using the basic set of the three brushes. The uh, combination brush with the soft and the stiff hairs and the uh, wolf hair brush um, also the weasel hair, small uh, detail brush. The first thing when you get a new brush, you need to soak them in clean water. And you can use your finger to squeeze it to get rid of the glue that holds the, the new brush. So you open it. Now you can see this combination brush with a, a stiff core and uh, surrounded by soft hair. This uh, bamboo and awkward brush, uh, you can also use it for other tasks. And uh, this is the weasel hair brush. So basically, we open the new brush first and now I'm going to show you some of the ideas of painting rose. Uh, the difference between rose and other flowers, for example peonies or like camellia, whatever, uh, is the shape of the petal. In the rose is more like a triangle. Um, so three triangle a group they uh, in different uh, you can you can have small triangles if uh, some artists do that and uh, then at the corner on the angle of each triangle to do another uh, layer of triangle and a large flower can have even um, more so the outer shape of a rose is more uh, like with the uh, corners or uh, angles, not, not as round as others. This is uh, the abstract kind of uh, uh, idea or principle, if you will. Uh, in modern design, uh, computer design, we call this the kind of uh, set, uh, the triangle fractal element or fractal uh, obviously design um, for this flower then you can develop a fractal uh, flower based on these uh, three strokes but uh, remember um, don't repeat the same kind of stroke so um, you should always vary each um, group or each element of the fractal. Um, so this just gives you a basic building break. When you actually paint the rose, uh, you should uh, observe the spirit or uh, grasp, grasp the feelings that you have when you observe the real roses. Um, you can see at uh, an early example in one of the early examples, I painted the, uh, the last stage of uh, the rose in the autumn, um, in a withered rose. So the, uh, the, the petal can be more uh, like a fawning uh, kind of. So you, you still, you know, three strokes, but uh, it could be in different stage of blooming or other, you know, like in the wind of, of frost uh, or uh, uh, wind uh, or rain that gives uh, more uh, a dew, obviously, like uh, in the morning, you know, that gives the uh, spirit to our painting. Here are some outdoor studies I did in my backyard.
in front of the real roses that we have. The pink ones, black lady, actually called um, the pink ones. These are done five years ago, around the 2000, end of 2005, towards uh, 2006. Step by step, the black lady, one of my favorite subject matter, I mean, with, uh, roses in my garden. Try to capture the spirit. You should try this outdoor painting if you have uh, roses uh, around. I found autumn roses uh, most inspiring to paint. They are the last flower of the year, just like chrysanthemum. Look at the color. Beautiful. So you can you can practice this kind of uh, strokes on a magic cloth uh, like I'm doing, uh, or a Buddha board, which is a little more uh, expensive. The early strokes are disappearing. So this is also known as the disappearing paper of disappearing cross in this uh, this is this cross is a very uh, flexible you can draw it and uh, it's easy to carry anywhere and you can see they are disappearing uh, before your eyes it's, that's why it's called a magic cross um, you can practice this uh, kind of strokes so um, when you when you paint um, with uh, actual paints or uh, ink, you will be more familiar with the moves. Uh, this kind of uh, strokes are very basic for leaves. Uh, a triangular, I mean a rectangular shape of a stroke. And you can combine two to get a larger leaf, or just the one single stroke for the side view. Each uh, leaf stem has four, uh, five or three sections with um, rows. Now I'm going to use the little rice paper, a Chinese shuan paper, to paint. The vertical strip. Um, it's about the half of the uh, the large sheet that comes with the uh, uh, the paper, and I cut in half. Uh, and vertically, you cut a, a quarter out, and then you it's like a T-shaped cut of a regular uh, table-sized rice paper. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the petals um, of the rows. Um, I will load with this uh, basic uh, combination brush. Uh, first use a little bit white and lots of water. At this point, by the way, you can use a little glue water just uh, to reduce the smearing effect on the rice paper. And then a little bit uh, uh, what we call this uh, rose color. It's a new Marie's Chinese painting color. It's not in the set. You have to buy it individually. Um, so we get a light pink. See that? And then uh, load only the intense, intense uh, rose color in the middle of the brush. Keep the bottom light, okay. And then 
um, touch a little rouge color. Rouge. It's a dark, very dark uh, crimson. Or is there a crimson kind of uh, color? And just on, on the on the tip, and you can even touch a little indigo blue to make it really dark. So we have a gradation from the dark to light. So choose a spot on the composition. Um, so I do three little strokes, a triangle, remember? And then uh, vary the position uh, to do another larger group. I manipulate the bottom of the uh, the heel of the brush so to um, create the the shape. You know. Another layer of triangle. When the brush gets dry, you move slower until it's exhausted. Okay, then reload the same. Little white, some glue water to get the light pink. And uh, a little, this one it will be lighter, so I use less rose color, and uh, again some uh, roots a little bit to the front. Let's change the perspective a little bit. And you can you can draw the dark part of the petal first if you will. Three strokes. And then make up the lower part. Then you uh, just make some random strokes to blend in. Remember the odds, odds, uh, the shape of the entire rose flower is uh, what the one with the uh, uh, corner or uh, angles. So the tip, you know, not a round one. And we can do another uh, back view. We'll do the stand. Okay. Uh, maybe a uh, I'm getting some uh, uh, green color, dark green, or actually dark, uh, dark green and light green variation, and a little bit uh, orange color to the front. And you, you can touch a little rouge to, to do the. Calyx, or the, the crown of the flower. And the stem. I 
don't have to blend color too well, just let it blend on the paper. I like to do the whole plant of rose, so the uh, the um, the cans of the uh, the flower you know, developed this year, and the old chunk and the, the root uh, near the root, the old um, like woody chunk. So I use the. Uh, some gray color, just the brown and blue mix, a little bit ink. Some very uh, light, dirty color or earthy color, if you even call it. Um, you, can, you can add a little glue in it to keep the consistency, since it will not uh, bleed and create more dry effect than we like. So it's not wet enough. I mean dry enough. You can move the stroke faster to get the roughness of the old. Uh, you can actually use this, uh, this stiff brush. It's better for the stain. Should have changed the brush. This uh, wall hair brush. This is the union of the cans. This ball can. A secondary or a guest. Okay, now the leaves. Boat with the uh, indigo and the uh, red and yellow mix to get the transparent green color. And uh, you don't have to make it really even. Some could be more blue, some more yellow. It's fine and uh, mix a little ink to tune down the brilliancy the, to make it a little gray and a little bit dark to the front and pay attention on the group of uh, the leaves instead of just individual strokes you know you, you always paint like a bamboo you, know, you always paint in five or three in a group, and you try to vary the uh, colors and contrast between dark and the light. You don't have to be following the lighting. Uh, it's more what we call like yin yang uh, contrast and balance. So the light next to dark help each other. The younger leaf shoes are more yellow and a little bit rich. The, the leaf become less uh, sections. It will become just one on the top three or, or five in the bottom. Leaves are drier. It could have some brown in the autumn, you know, the, the leaves. 
could turn the yellow and brown, orange color. To and uh, now I'll add a little more branches. Um, Let's do a, a old, uh, like the, the part of a, a dry flower or this is kind of seed. Some dried branches. We don't do the background uh, just uh, suggestively. So it exhausts all the colors. In every little mode, you have all the variations. And uh, now, before the leaves get dry, you can use the smallest branch among the basic three, the visual hair brush to do the veins on the leaf. So I load the brush with uh, dark ink and uh, on the younger leaves you can mix some uh, orange color and the rouge. It's kind of dark reddish uh, brown color. dark veins on the dark leaves. You can mix some dark uh, indigo to make it dark blue, gray to do the green leaves. Now redefine the leaves uh, directions if you will. Don't have to follow exact direction of the original stroke. So we defined this different ways. So many different ways. Oh, don't forget the thorns. I use dark rouge and the ink create a dark rouge. And uh, uh, this is this is how I do it. Press and then lift swiftly. They're very uh, abruptly, so it's like a, a chocolate chip. Is it? Press and lift while pulling on the one direction. And 
look. So the thorn has don't have to be very long. So you lift right away. When I do fast, you won't see the just practice a little bit, you will get used to it. Think of uh, chocolate chips when you do it. Dot some uh, what we call them must dots on the ground, or just leave it uh, as it is. In the past, some uh, viewers have suggested me not to do the grass like a child, childish style. So I avoid that mistake or that uh, kind of uh, stuff. Just leave it blank, I think. And uh, finally, I would find a place to write the inscriptions or just the shot signature if there's no room. This is small brush is used as a signature brush also. Okay. It seems like uh, the uh, the aged uh, uh, aged uh, chunk, chunk is not uh, dark enough. Uh, we can use some uh, shading technique to enhance it. But you don't have to, you, you should avoid doing it uh, right away. Wet and wet may be not a good idea on this. So I will wait until it uh, uh, dries enough, but not completely dry. You can use your hand, your palm, to uh, feel it. Many artists use, the, uh, use their arm as a little iron to dry, it, dry the parts quickly. That really works. Um, and you can feel it, the moisture. Then I use a very dry brush. What I did was I squeeze the brush so there's no water in the bottom of the brush. Okay, and then I load some dark brown uh, gray just on the front part. And I will do a incomplete kind of uh, outline, if you will. Very suggestively. It's like a shading. So let it blend in some part with the original color. To indicate the woody quality of this part. Some can go outside the color, some inside. And you can do some uh, shading like that. So the knots, you know, the uh, scars, all that kind of feeling. Like you could also have thorns, I think. Mm -hmm. 
No, uh, the place to write inscriptions um, for this composition, the best I think is to be on the top. So I'm writing a short title. Chiu means autumn. And uh, beauty. The year of tigers. Okay, my signature. Then put my name chart. And now the wood seal on this column. Now this is also known as the corner seal. It says half hundred and my last name Li. Um, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Happy painting. Bye bye. I feel like uh, we we need another side seal here. We'll, we'll uh, close the the composition. So I'll put uh, another side seal. Yeah, that balance the whole uh, harmonize the flow of energy. The three seal in the triangle. Everything is triangle in this composition. <laughs>